Welcome back to another, uh, I guess we had a little bit of a layoff, but uh, classic MLB uh, breakdown here at Fantasy Sports Insight. Uh, this is uh, free content, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. It helps us out a ton. Uh, we love doing it, but we also love the support from you. So uh, tomorrow does have an all-day slate, uh, kind of a the main slate starts at 3, and then uh, a night slate. So we are going to talk about mainly about the, the main slate, and then TK will touch on uh, some of the all-day uh, items to look at. So how's it going, TK? Uh, pretty good. You know, we've got another uh, big week coming up for PGA. You got the, the Torque Championship coming to a close. Uh, baseball's been, you know, rocking along here, uh, having some success in the GPPs. Uh, cash has been, been steadily growing. So um, looking forward to closing out the regular season this month and uh, working into some playoff baseball and uh, many more things to come for, for FSI. Yeah, one other thing, one other plug I'll put in is um, obviously with the U.S. Open going on, uh, be sure to check out um, one of our, our tennis coach has a video uh, on, in our channel that um, he really does a nice job at breaking down GPP and cash strategies um, when you're playing tennis DFS. So be sure to go over there and or check out our channel and check that out. All right, we have here, excuse me. Um, so we have, I have pulled up the screen share, a, uh, the main slate for tomorrow. Um, we are going to talk about pitching first, and then we will go into our hitter breakdown here per game. So um, at the top, we got Clayton Kershaw uh, on the bump against the Cardinals. Um, let's just start there, TK, and then um, kind of go down. I know you got a, a little bit of a bias at 8-7, but now that it's a little salty that he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> just right there, just sticking the knife yeah. in right to start. <laughs> they didn't yeah. eat him tonight, so whatever. You know, you just got, yeah. uh, you got uh, McKinney or whatever the hell his name is. McKenzie. McKenzie, My yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, go ahead, TK. Oh, yeah. Uh, Clayton Kershaw, obviously the top pitcher on the slate at 10-3, eight, eight and a half total. He's already had a 280 favorite. I'm sure that's going to get higher uh, as the night grows. 29% uh, K rate. The velocity's back up for Kershaw. Uh, he's really worked into some good ground ball pitching as well, 56 ground ball percentage. Uh, that's really high for his uh, usual numbers. Typically, Kershaw was a fly ball pitcher, strikeout pitcher. He's adapted his pitching style. He's uh, trying to induce more ground balls. That does give away uh, some hard contact, though. So when, you know, pitchers are trying to throw low fastballs and then trying to, you know, throw those off-speed change-ups down and in, uh, they do typically get hit hard sometimes. But uh, Kershaw's done really well limiting um, with, good, with good velocity. So uh, I love him. Here in this spot, three straight uh, games with 23-plus uh, fantasy points. 10-3 uh, is not expensive at all, especially on this small six-game slate. So uh, going to be very high-owned amongst uh, amongst the crowd and going to be very high-owned for me in my lineup. So pray the Dodgers don't burn me here in some typical fashion and pull him early. I'm just – you never know with this team. But uh, Kershaw is the obvious play on the slate. Yeah, so I would definitely lock him in for cash games for sure. Yeah, um, absolutely. We get down. Um, we have Dylan Cease, you know, Hap, uh, Heaney. Um, you know, Cease always seems to, like, bail out his semi-poor performances with, like, four to five strikeouts. And he's obviously does have some upside in strikeouts. But uh, he does have – I don't know. He just has, like, an implied floor. And, this he you know, he pitched against the White Sox recently – Went, didn't make it through five, but only gave up one uh, home run and, you know, had six walks. That was pretty brutal. But he does, like I said, right. he's still, like, just created an implied floor that he's never going to just totally bomb. But right. uh, I don't know that the upside is there for 9-5. Not at all. It's just going to be a total stay away from me. And then uh, Jay Happ uh, did find his form – I guess, kind of in the last couple of games. Uh, I, you know, his pitch count is, has been cranked up a little bit. I know they're easing him in uh, to the season. But for me, he's not somebody that I usually love to target because he doesn't really have strikeout upside. But is he somebody that you're uh, considering here on this slate? 
Well, he did pitch against the Mets last time out. 8-9 is relatively high for Jay Happ, who could get pulled after five and two-thirds in some way or shape or form. You know, the Mets do have some good righties on their team, but mostly their best hitters are lefties. Peter Pete Alonzo, you know, like uh, Wilson Ramos and guys like that scare me. Uh, you know, obviously I'm going to talk about the next pitcher and what my thoughts are on him. But, you know, Happ, good for GBPs, low-owned, uh, might not be my favorite, but I could understand it. Yeah, it kind of amazes me how they just, like, like a lot of these guys that are still, like, working it out, it seems like, are keeping their still high price tags. Like, it just doesn't seem right. like, Hap, like Hap should be priced lower than even Heaney here um, yeah. and, and Clevenger, obviously. But um, no. so it's just it's interesting how DK does that. But. Right, so uh, let's go to Clevenger. elephant in the room. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, Indians no longer in service for Mr. Mike Clevenger. That was obvious by trading him and uh, half of an outfielder away for six players. I actually don't mind it. Uh, but, you know, Clevenger gets to fit right in for Slam Diego. Uh, it's going to be a good spot here, 8-7. Uh, another chalky option, but worthy option. Uh, LA Angels can, you know, absolutely rip them apart if they decide to show up, but the LA Angels haven't shown up all year. Uh, this is a team that he was drafted by, the LA Angels. So he's gonna, he always gets juiced up for his games for the team that traded him away for the first time. I can't imagine what it's gonna be like for him coming back to Cleveland in any way, shape or form. Uh, probably won't see it this year, but maybe next year on a full schedule. Uh, this In his first, uh, first start for San Diego last time out, he had a six-inning performance with eight hits, two runs, one walk, and six Ks versus Minnesota. That's a good team. He really showed up for his audition for his new team. Um, you know, the walk rate's really scary, but, you know, he showed in his first start back since his Chicago shindig that, you know, he can limit the walks and he can get the strikeouts and ground balls he needs to have a good performance. I think this is definitely the spot you fade if you're going to fade chalk pitching. I would rather play Kershaw, but uh, Mike Clevenger is another solid cash option. Can can we just say like like what's behind him in his picture? Like is that like <laughs> I like know. hair or uh, like it, it? I don't know what it is, but it, that gray uh, thing. Yeah, it's like about. all of a sudden he's got like uh, you know some gray hair in the back, like a party <laughs> going no. back there. But I've never seen that from him. Um. Moving down here, the couple guys that I, that stuck out to me, I, I mean, Heaney is going to be, I think, a little bit more GPP just due to the matchup against the Padres, who are obviously hitting a lot better, and just being priced so closely to um, Clevenger, who I think is a better play. And obviously, and like we always talk about Heaney, like walks just just make him awful when he can't get out of jams, and then they, then they just pull him, you know, like – he never yep. finishes an inning. Like he never actually never. gets out of the game where he's like, I uh, threw hundred pitches. I just struck out the guy went one, two, three in an inning. He's always yanked never. because he can't <laughs> get out of an inning. Um, the other guy that stuck out to me down here is, is Walker. Um, mm -hmm. He's just been really good lately. And obviously he just got traded to the, to the Blue Jays. Um, I just don't understand the price tag. I, I, I don't either. I That's mean, it's against so Boston, alarming. But four, eight, I mean, it basically allows you to do anything you want with your lineup. Yeah, I'm with you. The four, I looked at the slate and I was like, okay, you know, Kershaw, Clevenger, I could understand the Heaney play. You know, Elf, Elflin is pitching relatively well this year. And then I keep scrolling. I'm like, Walker at 4 8. Like, wait, Boston's not that good. Boston's like the worst team in the AL East. Like, what? So I'm going to be all over this pick. I know that's a 10 and a half total, and, the, and it's then the line's only at a pick them, but he's got back to back performances in the 20 fantasy point range. Uh, and last time out, he went six innings pitched, four hits, no runs, three walks, and four Ks. I mean, that's for four eight. Like, <laughs> you, you, you know what? If you think of it like this, like, you're going to be paying probably like 6K or something from Cody Bellinger tomorrow. He's only going to get four at bats at probably like 5-5. Five, five. Walker could pitch three innings and only score like 10 points, and he's already at value. So it's like, uh, this is an obvious play. I, I would even think about playing him in cash based on that floor and that method on a six game slate and, and try to fit all the stud bats you could possibly think of. So, I, you know, if I'm making 50 lineups, I'd probably have Walker in at least 30 of them because of just how, how much it makes sense mathematically to play him. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think um, just like you said, 10 points, 
gets you, you gets know, you there. easily, yeah. it's easily value, but he has the upside of 20. So sure. um, I think he's always been that guy that's like had the talent. It just, just hasn't worked out for him. He's pitched well this year too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But, all right, let's get into okay. the bats here. Um, unless there's anybody else you want to talk about, I, mean, I, I don't really want to talk about Perez or Duffy. But. Uh, last thing for pitching uh, on the all day slate, just to get this out of the way for pitching. Um, I know we don't have it here listed on our screen share, but you know Lance Lynn and uh, Grinky are facing off Texas versus Houston. I don't mind the Lance Lynn pick versus Houston. Uh, Lynn's been pitching unbelievably. And Grinky is going to get the Texas lineup. And anyone who faces Texas has turned into my favorite streamer of the day because they just strike out and suck. It doesn't matter what ballpark they're in. So, uh, you know, I, I don't mind those two options for all day. And even if you're going to play the two game early, I would still play both of them and have no problem. Remember when, like, Danny Santana was priced at, like, 5-5 five, five <laughs> all the time? Like, last year when they actually were yeah. hitting the ball? Yeah, he was good. Right, yeah. And Joey Gallo didn't, you know, bat 150 on my season-long team. I loved it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> all right, let's uh, – the first game, uh, Washington and Philly. You know, these two teams, you know, in Atlanta, you can mix in there. Just, like, just crushing the ball. Like, you know, you're seeing these crooked numbers every game. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, now we have uh, Anibal Sanchez and Elfline on the mound. Bryce Harper, 6,000. I don't know that he's gotten that respect yet, but it's definitely deserved. Yeah, Harper's done fairly well, actually. You know, um, the Phillies, like you said, a couple of nights ago on Sunday night, they absolutely smashed the ball versus Atlanta. I think they put up 13 runs. They've been really seeing the ball well. McCutcheon and Real Muto and Hoskins have been on fire. I don't mind them in this spot versus Anibal Sanchez, who is just a career, uh, you know, he went journeyman. Uh, and, but the thing is, is Anibal can, you know, Anibal can Anibal and he can throw five innings, give up like six walks and three hits and maybe only give up a run. And it's just extremely frustrating. Uh, so the price tags are pretty high, uh, but, you know, we found a pitcher that we can latch on to and be able to afford some of these price tags. But uh, yeah, don't mind the Phillies at all. Um Kind of, kind of like the Washington Nationals in this spot versus Alplin, who struggles against lefties. You know, I'm a big Soto guy, so I'm going to be playing some Juan Soto for $400 less than you know Bryce Harper. Uh, Turner's been crushing the ball. Them in one-two punch in the Washington lineup's been really nice. And uh, Harrison and maybe someone like Fames, Eaton, and uh, Gomes, if he cracks the lineup's a really good cheap catching option. I don't mind those picks in that stack as well. Yeah, so both teams maybe that you would full stack on, but definitely have some options to do stream. Um, yeah. In the Mets and uh, and Yankees game, uh, is there a side that you uh, – I assume you prefer the Yankees over the Mets here? Um, uh, or is it kind I, of a stay away? I think this is that game where it's like you don't want to play half because you're afraid the Mets can score six or seven on them. And then at the same time, it's like, well, I don't really want to target against half on our six game slate in better spots. It's like, you know, you can play the Mets, you can play the Yankees, uh, more so the Yankees, probably, like you said, but probably a game I stay away from and hope it doesn't come back and burn me. Yeah, I think I think if you didn't have Walker, like if you if you faded Walker and you played um, Kershaw and Clevenger and you needed. These, Some guys, value. Gonna, yeah. these guys are going to have actually really good lineup equity at their price tag, like Urshela and Frazier and Voight are all under 4K, um, you know, and basically a bullpen game or, you know, I don't know how long. Yes, on the They back. usually give – they give him like three to four innings yeah. and then okay. they turn it over. I mean, yeah. I, I just think like the price tags are, are appealing enough if you needed the value um, at those positions Absolutely. because the, those guys will be batting one through four. So, right. all right, let's, let's move over to the um, – Padres and Angels. Is there anybody on either side? I know obviously we like Clevenger. Uh, Heaney um, can obviously load up the bases and then give up the big one. Uh, sure. Um, nothing stackable for me, but if you want to mention just the best plays because they're the best players in the game, like Tatis, Machado, and, and Trout, yeah, I don't hate that at all. I mean, but one offs probably in this game. And there'd be like the stud one-offs, but I'm not gonna get a, I'm not gonna get into value on a slate where 
we got other better options for two good pitchers in this park. All right, let's move on to Toronto and Boston. Uh, we have Martin Perez on the mound for Boston, and obviously we talked about Taiwan Walker. So let's look at the Toronto side here. Um, I, I'd still like in every slate I play with Biggio, like I just don't, I don't really understand why he's been continually the most expensive hitter. Like he hasn't been that good this year, but I, I know he has some stolen base upside, but he's hitting 250 with six bombs. Like he's had hardly any games, even over 10 points, but in a lefty lefty matchup, I don't really love Biggio, but is, uh, mm-hmm. I do like Hernandez and Vlad and um, I don't know. VR just still hasn't been the same, um, but Again, the guys yeah. who continue to be too cheap are like Grichuk, Kitten, too, who's just been smoking the ball. So I love Grichuk here. Oh, yeah, definitely all in on the Grichuk uh, cash train tomorrow. Um, if I'm picking Clevenger and uh, uh, Kershaw, I'm probably going to fade or I'm probably going to stack Toronto. Uh, these price tags were really juicy for me. Hernandez at 4 4, Grichuk under 4, uh, Guriel, BR has got really good BVB. I think he's got two homers versus Perez in his lifetime. Uh, Vlad's crushing lefties. Uh, Danny Anson's actually got some good BVP as well. So uh, I you do never like play guys who wear glasses. Oh, God. I mean, not glasses, they're goggles. <laughs> the, he's, he's got the Horace Grant goggles. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I like uh, I like Toronto the most in this matchup for sure, but you know, hey, I don't under, I don't I don't mind Boston. Um, you know, Walker could be really good or really bad. I think he's going to be good tomorrow, but um, you know, Devers has been hitting the ball pretty well. That's about all I got to say about Boston. Yeah. One one side note that is is completely DFS irrelevant is when I played I had Jansen in a sh- um, showdown or I no I don't know it was a two gamer or something and. I just needed him to get a hit, and he, he – it was the extra innings in this, so they had someone on second, and he was right. high up. He attempted to bunt. It was the worst <laughs> attempt. Like, the oh worst attempt. It, it went straight up, and the pitcher <laughs> literally just caught it like this. Like, how – like, how demoralizing was that, that I just needed a hit? And, of course, he was the leadoff guy, so there's obviously somebody on second to start it. Like, some of those new rules, like, have – just bit me because like either the game yeah. never gets to two innings, extra innings because somebody scores or whatever. But right. oh, uh, that brutal. was like uh never playing him again. So that's bad. Catch All right, let's, um we have KC here and um the White Sox. Uh, I do prefer the White Sox side here against Duffy. Um the price tags are a pretty egregious in my opinion i mean i know they've been good but three guys over 5k is um pretty tough to 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 do i guess um i mean we, if, if you use walker you can um but like you said i think we prefer i i prefer the la dodgers bats here over um the white Sox. but uh jimenez at 4-8 i really like with the home run upside and someone like edwin if he does get like in the four hole if you need that value um, I do like him. I mean, not saying that Anderson, Mancata, and Abreu aren't viable, but it just feels a little overpriced for um, for the, the matchup. Right. So, yeah, Tim Anderson slowing down since his incredible run of, like, hitting, like, seven homers in three days. It was <laughs> – that run was insane. Uh, but, yeah, he's slowing down right now, and that price tag's definitely not that uh, – uh, definitely something you don't want to jump on. Uh, Abreu and him and uh, Jimenez, Robert, they all have really good BBB. So does McCann. If McCann cracks the lineup, that's that's the spot. Usually people like when they do the double catcher, um, DH and catcher, I I usually float to McCann over Grandal because Grandal is a little bit more inconsistent. And whenever McCann cracks the lineup versus a lefty, he does really well. So I like uh, like McCann in this spot more so Grandal. Um, this is a, definitely a, a stack that I'm going to go to with a Taiwan Walker Kershaw kind of build because of the prices, because I'm going to want the top of the order, the studs. Uh, but, you know, like you had mentioned, Edwin does relieve you of some of that salary uh, with that 4K price tag versus a team versus a guy he's faced almost year in, year out with being on the Indians and now the White Sox. So, uh, yeah, don't mind him at all he's either. Yeah, it's 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 all, yeah, it's just tough. You know, now Edwin has gotten bumped down a little bit in the order with Grandall back. So I mean, when he's hitting six, it's a little less appealing at 4K than when he's hitting four. You know, but right, um, definitely both viable. 
All right, let's move to the Dodgers game here. Um, the Dodgers bats, I think, will be one of the most popular bats on the slate. Um, I don't, Bellinger, I know, sat out again tonight. And um, I don't know, I would expect him to be back, but it is against a lefty, so I, you know, I'm not really sure what to think um, for him there. Um, and it does say Turner on the IL, but I thought I thought he's yeah. He just went on the IL uh, tonight. Oh, he just got hurt like in the game. Yeah, oh. uh, no, right before uh, the game, I, they just put him on the IL like they did Will Myers for the Padres. Oh, tonight. okay, okay. Yeah. Um, but I do see somebody that I know you love at three five. Uh, I mean, you, uh, you have a love hate relationship with him, but it's a love hate. I just dropped him in season long. He, he <laughs> next up's Gallo. Uh, but, you know, Pollock is a righty versus a lefty in a great spot. Uh, Kiki, Will Smith is really hitting the ball pretty hard. That's going to be my catcher of the day tomorrow. Uh, another guy I like uh, if he cracks the lineup is the Chris Taylor. I know Gavin Lux has been taking some time from him, but uh, righty lefty is something I'm liking. Uh, Edward Rios has a, has a pretty good, uh, you know, option here at third base. With Turner on the IL, this is a lefty lefty, but um, my my hope is that these righties can get to the lefty and Rios can finally get a matchup versus a, a righty coming out of the bullpen. Uh, Arizona is going to be, uh, I'm not sure, is this Smith guy going long? Because the, the research I did, they had Weaver. I'm oh, not sure. yeah. Uh, they don't even have a sure. They don't even have listed here as a as a pitching option. So yeah. So I'm not sure if it's Weaver, if it's Smith. Uh, but yeah, like either way, uh, Dodgers going to be on my radar. I pr probably prefer, you know, Toronto, Chicago, maybe the Nationals and the GPPs. Uh, Bets though would be a top option on this team if they are in fact facing this lefty though. So. That's what I'd have to say about the Dodgers. All right. So that is our um, six-game slate. Yeah, and I, like I said, I totally agree. I think um, Bellinger has been hitting better against lefties as the year has gone on. That's where he's hit some of those bombs that you're, like, not expecting him to hit a home run that game and you fade him. And then he's like, oh, yeah, he's Cody Bellinger. He can just hit bombs against anybody. But Right. Um, yeah, so I think, uh, you know, kind of in conclusion, you know, our top three pitching options – um, definitely are going to be uh, Kershaw, uh, Clevenger, and the punt of Taiwan Walker. And um, TK, you want to just quickly review your top teams that you want to target? Yeah. So like I said, uh, for value, I like Toronto. I think they're in a great spot versus Perez. Uh, top stack, probably going to be Chicago for me versus Duffy. Uh, and then I'd say for GBPs, give me the Nats. And then uh, maybe Chalk, Dodgers. Just, just because. And right. uh, oh, one thing about the uh, early games, um, Chicago and Pittsburgh is going to be a slugfest tomorrow. Brew Baker versus Mills. I think you could play the Pirates side in that two-game slate, and then I wouldn't mind face. I uh, wouldn't mind, wouldn't mind them in an all-day format as well. As Mills can be uh, touched up a time or two, but Cubs, Cubs in play as well too. Hap, Baez, Rizzo, and Hayward. All right. Thanks, TK. Uh, we will uh, be back again uh, with some classic and uh, just a ton of other content at FSI. So uh, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already subscribing, and hopefully we see you back uh, tuning in to our other content here at Fantasy Sports Insight.